guys and welcome today we're going to make these beautiful um, stamp holders you can also make them for labels and ephemera if you wish but I've just recently um, stamped out a heap of stamps on coffee dyed paper and I thought I need somewhere to store them so I've made this beautiful folder I'll go through um, everything you'll need to make that in a minute but we'll just open this up now I've, I've just put some collage of tickets and stuff there just to sort of make it look um, a bit more attractive rather than the plain green. So it opens up. There is so much uh, room in these. And that one opens up. And then that one opens up. I haven't filled it yet, but um, I'm going to be putting some other ones in there as well. Um, you've got it on that side. You've got it on that side. You've got it on that side. And then it just closes together and I've just got one of these um, simple closures around there. All right, I've done a lot of pre-inking um, for this because there is quite a few pieces um, to this. But basically to start with for the actual folder, you need three pieces of seven seven inches by 10 inches so i've already cut three there and i've inked them and then you need um, two pieces of six and a half so they're slightly smaller by 10 so the same height um, and these are the internal flaps and then we need for the pocket strips out of the i did it out of the same cardstock that you can turn them around uh, whichever uh, side you're working on when you fold it in you'll need 40 of these and they're three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches and they'll be stuck along the pages and then for the actual closure which is this closure that wraps around we need a uh, two pieces because uh, 12 inches is not quite long enough so I've done it in two pieces so they're both two and a half inches wide one is six and three quarters and one is eight and a half um, and they just overlap a little bit but they will go around to form the closure and then your bits and pieces if you want to get prepared ahead of time I've got the I'll just run through it here I've got the a tag which I've just uh, cut out myself and um, stamped some images on there. And that actually measures, so two and a quarter by four and a quarter, but you can make them as big or as small as you like. I actually like it to be just inside the um, flap around closure there. So you're highlighting a little bit of a border on that. And then I've got, this is stamped on cardstock as well. So just some sort of a background. You could do book page there, um, some tickets, just so sort of a little bit of layering. You've got your field label over there, your ticket, and I've, I will ink those up. A couple of stamps, because I wanted to highlight what I've actually got in there. So just grab, grab out some ephemera. It doesn't have to be the same as what I've got here. But I'm just gonna replicate this one and uh, this one's mine I the one i make today i will be putting in my etsy shop guys so if you wanted to purchase that um, i will put a link down below as well so like i said i've done all the inking just to make it a little bit um quicker you don't want to sit here and watch me ink 40 odd pieces of cardstock so grab your scorer i've got a scorer on my trimmer and we'll do our scoring so we'll go with the three seven by tens. So one doesn't get scored at all. So choose sort of which one you want to be your back piece. And there's sort of no real up and down. There's a bit of script on this one. But that's, that's the way there, that script there. She might have it over like that so it sort of marries up a little bit so no scoring on the back piece so put it off to the side and then work out if you're working on directional um, patterned cardstock then make sure that you don't have it upside down on this other side the same as um, that one so it's got a fair it's got a very faint 
script on there so I want to thinking of that it's going to fold that way so we want to score on the right hand side of the left piece and on the left hand side of the right piece and to do that I'm going to turn just turn this one upside down because I want to score half half a centimeter I'll just lift this one up so we can see so half a centimetre is there. And that forms our flap um, or our hinge so we can adhere it to that back page. Now let's do this one. that hinge just pop that off to the side we've still got to score a couple more pieces but we'll just um, do one stage at a time just so you can follow along if you are crafting with me today or even if you're writing down instructions but you won't have to I'm going to put them down the measurements down the bottom and I am also thinking about starting to do up full instructions for my videos with pictures and directions and have them in my uh, Buy Me A Coffee site. That way you can print it out and um, keep them in a folder. That's what I like to do. So you've got sort of full, full instructions. We're just going to glue that right to the edge because we've folded this is quite thick cardstock and because we've folded it it's now got that white edge so we just just give it a quick inking it gets rid of that stark white that's that one now we do the other side And I'm just using art glitter glue so just be mindful that doesn't give you much of a wiggle room window so try and get it in place if not the first time then uh, maneuver it quite quickly after going to run down it with my bone folder and I'll do both the insides as well just to just give that firmness to make sure the glue is adhered so there's the front cover <clears throat> of our folder now we want to open that up because the two six and a half by tens we're going to do the same thing but we're going to Put it on the outer pages so once again we want to score on the left side we want to score on the right side and on the right panel we want to score on the left so grab my scorer again turn this one upside down This one so half an inch I'm scoring on these it's the same on all of them and now we're going to glue them in so this one will go right over to this side Just using my bone folder to put that a little bit more flat it just makes it easier to glue the cardstock I'm using it is um, really nice and thick it's from 49 a market
if you've only got um, thin cardstock or um, heavy patterned paper then maybe glue a couple together because you want your your cover fair and or your folder fairly sturdy what I do is I'll just have a look around if if it's a little bit hanging off the side there I'll trim it up now's probably the great good time to do it sometimes even the best laid measurements can be out a little bit end up with guys is that's our folder so we open the cover we open the cover we open the cover we open the cover so we've got a lot of real estate there to um, put some strips on and what I'll do I'll glue a few in place with you now I'll do the rest later because you don't want to watch me glue in 40 strips we'll put piece the others together so what I've also done out of um, a length of cardstock so it's the same length as your folder and I've gone a quarter of an inch up from the bottom and ruled a line and then two two inches every section and I usually just put it in the middle so this one goes right to the bottom this is a scrap piece so I didn't go quite to the top when I measured from the bottom so go from the bottom and this is how I mark to so my strips are straight so I'll just go through because we're going to put the strips over these marks I'll just go through and I'll just put a dot and it acts as a guide so you get even spacing when you go to put your strips down. So you can faintly see those, but the strips are gonna go over the top of them. And because this is two-sided cardstock, so this is the side that's showing. Now you can put them like that, or you can go alternative and go the other side, which I'll show you in my other one if you want them to stand out. So I've got on green on green and the cream on the cream because you want to you want to be able to see what you've got in the pockets not necessarily have a green stripe across that light background so that's the way we'll do this one as well so they're the same so it's the cream on the cream so these are cut from the same cardstock and then all we do is we glue on three sides so just a fine and it has to be really fine because we're not putting a lot of weight in there and the first one you just got to you measure it up on your little dots of course but you measure so it's equal fairly centered and then the others will guide you up that way as well you can measure in from the side on the first one if you're not real confident but that's entirely up to you 
I'm I'm just working on this middle panel and I haven't taken the hinges into consideration but they are the same width anyway If you are making this to put ephemera and that in, you may not want to have your pockets as close together. Like if you were doing this for your tickets or your labels, well labels you'd do the same size, but tickets you might space them out and only have, um, what is it, one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five strips, you might want to space it out and go to four. I think I did, um, did another one which I will open up and show you a bit later. And I did go the four spacing in some of the areas just for some bigger items in it. You can also do these strips in vellum. Um, it is a little bit more fiddlier to work with. Um, I've done some label holder folders with that um, and it, it is a lot of work um, these ones actually they fit snug so you, your tickets and that don't fall out just working with a little bit heavier cardstock So you can see by having the template, um, putting them down is easy because your marks are there. And once you get the, the width of the first one, so that's your first um, page done, we'll do one of the green, green sides. So the same, using your template, the same. Once you make one of these, you'll make a few. So this template you'll be able to use with every single one of them. Like I said, if you do all your cutting and your inking, then it's, it's a fairly quick process of gluing them down. And by having the double fold out, it gives you so many panels to put your labels, or in my case, stamps, And making your own ephemera is so much fun. If you've got the stamps, then you may as well use them. And uh, you know, when you run out, you can simply just stamp some more. So there's no, no additional cost outlay after you have the ink and the stamps. So see how easy it is using the template. We might, we might do these two sides. And then we'll um, decorate the closure.
So I think from memory I used four 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. So if you don't have four the same, which is what I used here, then you know get ones that, that complement each other. And you don't need to go any deeper than the three quarters of an inch because what I find is it's enough to hold your stamp, your ticket or your label and doesn't cover too much up. So, you know, when we're flicking through these, a lot of the times it's visual when we're deciding on what we want to add to our projects that we're working on. Then we'll just do this side and then we will decorate the front. I don't know whether I don't think I did know. I'm using a pen here, but you can use a pencil. Doesn't matter, like I said, the strips are covering it up. gone fairly plain in my cardstock because like I said I didn't want to highlight any of this it was what I was putting in the pockets is what I wanted to feature so entirely up to you if you've only got you you would be able to cut all of these out of an A4 as well A4 bit of cardstock so if you've just got plain you know white or cream cardstock you could do that with some very faint like a double uh, stamped off stamping on there just to give it a little bit of character or texture. So that's another way uh, with your A4 cardstock, you may be able to get a heavier cardstock than you can in your 12 by 12s for the cover and for the pockets too, because we want, I think it's a, this is a, um, about a 270 uh, GSM cardstock weight but 49 a market do do a really good heavy cardstock it's one of my favorite ones to use I even go down and use so that's you know that strip you always get on your 12 by 12s I even uh, didn't want to waste that because we're featuring that side so we're gluing this side down so use all your scraps that you can thinking about you know how you're gonna glue it down because you don't want to waste And that's that one we've done that one over there you can if you want to also do that one there which is what what I did so you want that that extra page um, this is your front cover you want to do there and there and there and then when we fold it over like that that is our front so that's the one that we're going to decorate now just gonna, this is just to ink on so I'm going to 
ink ink my ephemera that I've got out. So like I said, this is a stamped image. Just grunging it up a little bit. The ink I'm using is Scorched Timber. It's one of, relatively one of the new, new inks. I just love it. Now this one you don't have to ink on the back because we're actually sticking it down onto our closure. So we just um, ink the front of that one. All of these just ink the front because we're, we're gluing them all down. got extra pieces out I'm not not sure these ones here like you would have seen in the folder that that's a stamped image I did a lot of um, different colors um, because sometimes when you you're doing layers or clusters in your journal it's nice to have a little pop of color so I've got some dark and some red may even um, I think I will I'll put a, um, a heap of these in the folder the one this one that's going in my Etsy shop just to kick you off if, if you're going to be using it for a stamp folder and I'll show you my other one that you can also put your labels and everything in it This one I've made as well, just using a stamp. And then I just use pinking shears to cut it off so it just looks like dressmaking pinking shears. So it looks like a ticket. And this is off the Field Notes um, Stampers Anonymous stamp set by Tim Holtz. So I'll try to get a bit of variety of colour in there. So next I'm going to get my two wrap round strips. So the longer one will, will go round the back like that. And then my theory is that's a little bit longer. So I will I'll snip that off a little bit. Um, and then it would just meet up at the back there. I've only got a slight, as you can see, a slight overlap there but before I do that I just want to work out because I want I want a bit of a gap between the two of them so this one I'm actually going to trim off a little bit now this is the eight and a half so I might take it back to I might actually take an inch off it. So I'll correct those measurements in that one will go to seven and a half. Yep, and then I'm going to take Take three quarters of an inch off that one and see how we go. Because I want a, I want a bit of the tag showing, and I want a space there 
so um, we can see a little bit of the background and you know it's a proper closure where we've got the string going over all right so what we'll do is we'll decorate this first of all so on there I've, I've got the tag I was going to call it a label tag just back so we might when we cut this off so it's got a border right around it it just gives it just another effect and I would do this one before you put the eyelet in there so ink those raw edges I'm just going to put a pin on just to hold that together and now I want to do the eyelet so I'm going to get my cropper dial and I'm going to go the bigger hole just eyeball and lining it up in the middle like that and then I will grab my eyelet no sorry first I will stick that down now that we've got the hole lined up you could stick it first if you wanted to entirely up to you you got the hole there to line it up now Also, my thought around putting the tag here is your fold because it's going to be opening and closing a few times. Having that extra layer of cardstock over the top just reinforces the strength of it from the bending so it doesn't tear. And now we'll put the eyelet in there. Let's close this glue up. And I'll go antique bronze again, because we've got some grungy browns showing there. And I'm going to use the little washer. It just neatens up the reverse side because we'll be seeing both of them. You don't have to. I just find it finishes it off nicely. It's harder to coordinate it on the cropper dial, but, <clears throat> but we'll get there. Oil it through these ones are fairly snug which is good so I can sit the can sit the washer over there where the eye eyelet doesn't fall back out and then just smush it together so you can see it just gives it a really neat and there's no sharp bits to catch on that And then on the other one, <clears throat> actually we had a little number on that too, which I haven't pulled out. Let me just grab a number. <clears throat> just having a look for a little number. Hopefully, well there's a number one. Just have a look to see if we've got any more. So number six is better. But you can also stamp out a number <clears throat> if you wanted to. Um, I've got these. I'm pretty sure they were um tracy fox i love junk journals um so they're a digital print so i will be able to print 
print more out because I have used them a lot. Alternatively, yes, um, you can also stamp your own number and then just go around the edge in a color. Um, I should be doing a few of them as well because I do have number stamps. All right, so now we're just going to do like a little bit of a collage on there. So we're going to use the green, the number, and perhaps a label. Maybe this one. So I don't sort of want to cover too much of that writing up there. I really like the look of that. I will take it over a little bit. A lot of the times we have these beautiful stamped backgrounds, but we end up covering half of it up anyway. But the overall effect, you still get to see bits of it. And, you know, layering labels and numbers and words and whatever you've got there it's definitely worth doing like the effect is really really good you of course don't have to um, put anything on your tags you could just do some faint background stamping on there like in a script or something and then ink it up Yeah, I like it as the number six, not nine. That's that one. Now we want to put some twine on there. So we just want to tie... getting the thicker end tie our twine around and just put it in a knot you can put the knot more to the back that way it'll just hide the end and then snip the end off. And then your tie will come out from underneath like that. It just makes it a little bit neater. You can, if you want to, put a dob of glue to stop anything moving. It's not necessary. And that's your, we'll just, we'll just bend that a little bit in, in keeping with the one I'd already bent was I, when I wrapped it around. And the ones we trimmed off, just make sure you ink the edge. See how the ink gets rid of that stark white? Okay, so now we want to glue, actually before we do that, we want to put our, our closure on there. So I'm going to grab the crocodile again. I'm going to take him about halfway. These ones I cut out of uh, craft stock. I think that is a three quarter of an inch circle punch. And then I, I did two and glued them together. So they're really heavy heavy and stiff and that is the small hole that I just used on the crocodile um, to put that through I'm going to ink that and then we just get a brad just around the edge it just defines it a little bit more it ages it a little bit too So if we get our brad and put through there and then put through here, actually before we do that we want to we wanna put our, our decorations on there. So I put field 
labels and we can redo that hole and I'll show you how to do that if you if you muck it up and we've got our, our ticket so it was like that so let's glue that on once again get your tickets or your labels out and have a play around like do a bit of layering like this it's it's just a lot of fun And if you want to keep it plain, keep it plain. So I always leave a little bit of a frame there because we've got a little bit of a frame going up there. So that's, that's more a visual thing. If you wanted to take it right to the edge, of course you can. All it's doing is decoration really so there's our hole at the back we just um, grab our all actually we grab our copper doll should be able to line that up turn it over now we get our little closure and our brad and our brad will just pop through there And there's no need to put anything over the back because we're not having anything sliding in and out. This is actually going to be glued now to, to the cover. So we sort of work out where, I might ink that spine, work out where we're going. I normally choose half the halfway mark. halfway mark like that and then the other one will be glued on the back but then it'll wrap around so it will go like this and then we've got some collaging underneath to go there as well so let's let's do that first so we work out roughly that we're at half Actually, I might glue that piece first. That way we've got a bit of a gauge. Make sure it's straight. And now we're going to collage this other side. So you'll see this one will go not quite to the edge, um, but close enough. It'll still help keep it a little border and it fits up snug against this as well. Doesn't have to though, that's just a happy accident where things, you know, they just marry up sometimes. If you don't have a piece um, of ephemera this big, collage a heap of, you know, your tickets and your tickets and stamps and labels and whatever you would normally collage with. So then I've got this one. This one's an extra one. So we could go with that one as well. I actually like the darker one. I've inked it quite heavily. I could ink that one. We'll put that to the side. So it just shows your variation of what you can do, what you can put there. Some of it gets covered up by the closure, but it's about having just different things for your eye to look at.
and then one of my um, homemade stamps on coffee dyed paper which is great for collaging because it's super thin you're not adding any any extra to it And then this one is a label. It's also a digital, digital print. And I'm just gonna butt it up against that other ticket there. And then we'll put a red stamp up the top to give it another pop of color. And I've sort of gone over, over both of those. Okay, so now we're going to glue the back of this one down and be mindful that it slightly goes over over that one so we do want to glue it right to the edge now in the fold in here I don't glue right to that fold uh, there's no need to I will come back about a quarter of an inch Turn it over. And then the closure just hooks around always a bit tight the first time I go a couple of times around and then I will just um, cut it off down the bottom now I'm thinking I may put a bead on top of that let me just put the you can put a bead or a charm see if I've got a nice little green green or brown beads that have Fairly good hole for the cord to go into. And it'll just give it a little bit of weight on the end. I'll do two. Not there, I thread the beads again. And then we'll tie a knot down the bottom. That will stop them sliding, sliding around. This twine's quite rough to <laughs> close or slide a knot on. There we go. So we've got a beautiful, so it just holds your, your cord down, um, gives it, you know, a little bit extra dangle there as well. 
Um, but here we go, guys. That's we'll open it up. You'll have I'll finish these strips off camera, but you'll have strips here and here. You'll have strips that side and that side. We've already done the strips here, done the strips there, done the strips there. We've done the strips there. I've got to finish the strips off there. But so much real estate there to put things in. So if you if you had tickets and didn't want to use this for stamps or thought I'll have stamps on the first two page pages, then you know that you can put your tickets and your labels in here anyway. So you can have a combination of both. I'm actually doing separate ones for each. So I know that, you know, my green one like this is, I've got my tickets in. I've got a, another one, which I'll show you now. So that one's going on um, Etsy. I will also throw some of my um, handmade stamps like this in there to start you off. Um, I've got this one here that I also made and you can see that I've just used um, the belly band type of thing and I've made it into two, two tags. So you could do that type of closure as well. That one's stuck down like we've, we've stuck this other one. And I've got, I made some handmade um, tickets and labels the other day. There is a video for that one, um, which I will link also down the bottom for you guys. I've gone through and made all of these. So these are all handmade. Um, and then I've just um, done some plain frames that I can stamp on later on. But you can see how much you actually fit in these folders. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like how good is that? And the beauty of them, and I'll show you when I close it. How thin are they? So you could have them all stacked in a um, like a those book holders, and all that storage is holding what you normally would have a few containers um, of tickets, ephemera, all of that sort of stuff. But have a go at these guys. They are just so much fun. And as you see, they store so much stuff. Um, I'm going to definitely be making more. Um, for myself as well um, this one's definitely going in in Etsy and I may even make um, you know some similar ones that are different colors and that but keep an eye out for that um, this one will be in my Etsy shop at the time I load this video though but thanks guys I hope um, you got a lot out of that and um, some inspiration on how to store your stamps your tickets your labels ephemera etc um, have a go at it and um, I'd love to hear in the comments on um, how it went or how it turned out thanks guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next video bye